that education can make a difference in a, in a conflict country. And uh, because we were, you know, it was a lone voice, I, um, so I, I keep on fighting to And then I, I meet Peter, and Peter Yarrow from Peter, Paul, and Mary. I'm just, when, you know, when you're in the U.S., you hear Peter, Paul, and Mary, you just faint. Right? <laughs> and, and, uh, and when I mentioned the, uh, the, the, despite this commitment that this working group on education for Julie was leading, Peter said, I'm here to help. I said, Peter, on April 8th in Paris, there's an event. Would you come? He said, of course I will come. And so my heart just, uh, you know, started beating faster, and I immediately called my uh, uh, my colleagues in the working group, and everybody was absolutely delighted. So uh, so we absolutely delighted that Peter. Je disais qu'il y a... Il y, a, il y a cinq ans qu'on a commencé ce travail avec le, le monde du travail sur l'éducation et dans les pays en conflit. On était vraiment seuls, on était quatre personnes. Et, euh, et sur ces quatre personnes, on avait les mêmes objectifs. Euh, on ne savait pas trop comment faire, mais on savait ce qu'on voulait réaliser. Et ce qu'on voulait réaliser, c'était faire en sorte que les, les systèmes éducatifs puissent jouer un rôle positif euh, dans l'évolution des conflits vers, euh, vers la paix. Et c'est vraiment euh, essayer de mettre... Euh, euh, de mettre l'invisible, de rendre l'invisible visible, parce que souvent tout ce qui motive le conflit, on ne le voit pas. Euh, on en entend parler, mais on ne le voit pas. Et on ne le voit pas dans les statistiques de l'éducation, on ne le voit pas dans les, dans les, dans les programmes, on ne le voit pas dans les, souvent dans les manuels scolaires. Et c'est à nous de décoder un peu. Et c'est à nous de voir euh, comment l'éducation, malheureusement, euh, contribue au conflit, mais aussi comment l'éducation peut participer de façon positive à, à un monde plus. Et donc, il y, a, il y a cinq ans, quand nous étions les quatre, là, à décider de ce qu'on allait faire euh, pour promouvoir cet agenda euh, pour l'éducation, on était très seuls. Et, et, on, et moi, je pleurais sur l'épaule de tout le monde, tous ceux qui voulaient bien m'écouter, en disant on est seul, personne ne personne veut nous écouter. Euh, mais voilà, nous sommes là maintenant, nous étions 260 cet après-midi à, à écouter ce que le, ce groupe a, a, a réalisé. Et c'est un, un grand plaisir. On a rencontré, donc, euh, pendant que je, je pleurais, à nouveau sur euh, l'épaule de tout le monde. Euh, on a rencontré euh, Peter Yarrow, qui, qui est euh, évidemment le, le grand Peter de Peter, Paul et Mary. Et aux États-Unis, quand, euh, le, le, quand on entend simplement Peter, Paul et Mary, tout le monde est prêt à s'évanouir parce que, parce que tout le monde a chez soi euh, un, 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 un ou plusieurs disques de, 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 du groupe. Donc, euh, quand on a demandé à Peter de venir, euh, s'il était disponible le 8 avril à Paris, il a dit « mais oui, je viendrai ». Et, euh, et il a dit, mais vous n'êtes plus seul, je serai là pour, euh, pour vous aider. Donc, on est absolument ravis d'avoir euh, Peter. Uh, uh, you know, I, I cannot describe, Peter, you go on the internet and you just do Peter, Paul and Mary and you have everything. But what, uh, what makes the difference about Peter is that he's able to, uh, to combine music, art, poetry, and all for a good cause, and the cause of, of peace, and the cause of nonviolence. And um, after the, the massacre in, um, in Newtown in Connecticut, in, uh, right before Christmas, uh, Peter came, picked up his guitar, gave a free concert, uh, and again and again showing his commitment to, uh, to a more peaceful world. And that's through, uh, you know, through schooling, through helping children grow, uh, you know, in a healthy and peaceful way. So uh, that's all I can say about Peter, because there's so much more. Uh, Peter, the floor is yours. Thank you. The gathering today has been very moving and it compels me to begin with a song that uh, Peter Paul and Mary sang at the March on Washington in 1963 when Dr. Martin Luther King delivered his I Have a Dream speech and now I'll say it in fractured French. Uh, C'est important pour moi chanter ce, cette chanson parce que c'est une uh, chanson de vision et, et l'espoir en Amérique pour l'égalité uh, de, uh, de, uh, de toutes les personnes, les personnes uh, noires et blanques ensemble. Et, uh, C'était un grand, grand um, mouvement. A uh, quarter of a million people, comment dit-on en français? Oui, un quart de million. 
Et, et, et j'étais euh, très jeune, mais c'était les, les jeunes qui étaient euh, au bout de ce mouvement pour l'égalité, le Civil Rights Movement. Listen, how many years can some people exist before they're allowed to be free? How many times can a man turn his head and pretend that he just doesn't see The answer, my friend, is blowing, is blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in. And now, très doucement, very softly, with me, avec moi. The answer, my friend.
in that cell where you used to be, what was your cell? You broke your cell, you feel? You broke your cell of, of anxiety? Tell me, what was that perception of you? What? The cell. The cell of the shame, guilt, what else? And why you give that? Social cohesion, she's in, and the, and the absence of cognitive dissonance. <laughs> so, when you hear that, it's it's not, it's not a symbol. It is a, um, it is a, uh, a, a manifestation, of, togetherness, unanimity of spirit, friendship, openness, and most importantly the taking off of the mask so that the emotions can be felt, emotions that are hidden behind fear. They're hidden behind pain. Uh, this, is, um, this is the character of this kind of music. And this kind of music was a great and powerful force in terms of bringing Americans together in a way that made us realize we could change our path. And that realization was in the context of the civil rights movement. Now, I was just recently at Newtown, and in a while I'll show you a short clip from the concert. It was not a concert to make money. It was a concert of called a concert of healing, caring, and togetherness. And the pain that was experienced on stage was overwhelming. Um, a couple that had, that had lost their child, Francine and David Wheeler, sang, although it was hugely difficult for them. And uh, the outpouring of love and determination was overwhelming from the and, and sense of community, togetherness. And it, it, is, it is a case in point about one of the dynamics that does bring people together when there is great pain and suffering. To turn that into determination and love. Well, one of the songs we sang is this one, which is the anthem of Operation Respect's Don't Laugh at Me program, which is essentially devoted to creating an environment that is accepting, caring, respectful, um, devoid of ridicule, of pushing the other away, that is safe, that is, that allows children to think. How can they think? if they can't, uh, if they're consumed by fear and anxiety. Can't think, can't do homework. So here is the song that's the anthem of what is called the Don't Laugh At Me program that is all over the world, and I'll tell you more about it. But here is an anthem, and there's a reason for my singing it right here today, and it's part of my inherently in my very being, being a champion as a signatory for this understanding and agreement. You will hear it in this song.
I'm a little boy with glasses, the one they call a geek. A little girl who never smiles, cause I got braces on my teeth. And I know how it feels to cry myself to sleep. I'm the kid on every playground, I'm the one that's chosen last. I'm a single teenage mother trying to overcome my past. You don't have to be my friend, but is it too much to ask? Don't laugh at me. Don't call me names. Don't get your pleasure from my pain. In God's eyes, we're all the same Someday we'll all have perfect wings Don't laugh at me I'm the beggar on the corner You've passed me on the street I wouldn't be out here begging if I had enough to eat And don't think I don't notice That our eyes never meet Don't laugh at me Don't call me names Don't get your pleasure from my pain In God's eyes we are all the same Someday we'll all have perfect wings. Don't laugh at me. I'm fat, I'm thin, I'm short, I'm tall, I'm deaf, I'm blind. Hey, aren't we all? Don't laugh at me. Don't call me names. Don't be happy because I'm sitting out here at the edge of the schoolyard crying. I've been ridiculed, humiliated, called names, and bullied every day for the past three months. I can't think anymore. I'm not hungry. I can't sleep. I can't even remotely think about doing my homework. The doctor says I'm depressed, and I'm not going back to this school. I don't want to become a child that retaliates, as those children do every day. Better that I not go back to this school. And I don't understand how it happened. There used to be caring and loving around me, and now I know, it starts with, you can't play with us. You're the wrong religion. You're the wrong color. You're, you're gay. You're ugly, you're stupid. Get away. You can't sit at this lunch counter. And then it builds. It builds to bias and prejudice and hatred and hate killing and war and genocide, it's the pyramid of hate. We have to cut it off right there. Very hard to do that with adults who are stuck with their fear and their anger. But with children, if we educate them, they can interrupt that cycle. And how do we do that? We do that with, with love, and we do that with, with compassion. <laughs> Sing this with me, I'll give you the words. Don't laugh at me, don't call me names. Don't get your pleasure from my pain. Don't laugh at me, don't call me names. Don't call me names, don't get your pleasure. Don't get your pleasure from my pain in God's eyes. In God's eyes, we're all the same. We're all the same someday. Someday we'll all have 
perfect wings don't laugh at me yes I'm fat I'm thin I'm short I'm tall I'm deaf I'm blind I'm disabled who of us is perfect I'm black I'm white I am brown, I'm Jewish, I'm Christian, I'm Muslim, I'm Buddhist, I'm Hindu, I'm agnostic. I was born in Sarajevo, I was born in Kosovo, I was born in Northern Ireland, I was born in Africa, I'm Hutu, I'm Tutsi, I'm gay, I'm lesbian. And I am American, Indian, I'm very, very young, I'm quite aged. I was born in Iraq and Afghanistan, I was born in the Sudan, Mexico, Canada, the United States of America. I'm Israeli, I'm Palestinian, I'm very wealthy. I'm very, very poor. Don't laugh at me. Please smile at me. Please be my friend. Please accept me just the way I am. No one of us should be out. We all should be in. Someday we'll all have perfect wings. Don't laugh at me. Don't laugh at me. Don't laugh at me. Don't call me names. Don't call me names. Don't get your pleasure. Don't get your pleasure from my pain, from my pain. In God's eyes, in God's eyes, we're all the same. Someday we'll all, someday we'll all have perfect, perfect wings. Don't laugh at me. Don't laugh at me. Now, why is this the anthem, and how does that relate to this gathering? If you had that sound, which is sung in 22,000 schools across the United States, it's because a third of the schools have adopted this program. It's not, it's not a panacea, but it, it brings social and emotional learning tools combined with heart-opening exercises, music being the most important. And when kids can, can sing together and feel close, and make that sound of unanimity of spirit, of peace and hope. They are not watching somebody doing it. I did not do that. I can't do that. You did it. Just like the 250,000 people did at the March on Washington, or the anti-war moral movement, or the women's movement, or the climate movement today, or Occupy Wall Street, or Madison, Wisconsin, whatever it is, when people do that 